The Barren Islands sit between Kodiak Island and the tip of the Kenai Peninsula. In 1778, the Barrens were named by Captain James Cook. Here, powerful merging currents of Cook Inlet, the Gulf of Alaska, and Shillikoff Strait create severe tide rips and rich upwellings, providing abundant food for marine mammals and birds. These seven named islands form the largest seabird colony in the northern Gulf of Alaska. Only 60 miles from Homer, the Barren Islands are now part of the Alaska Maritime National Wildlife Refuge. In 1974 and 1975, Edgar Bailey, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service seabird biologist, led the first reconnaissance surveys to the Barren Islands to determine species composition, distribution, and abundance of seabirds and marine mammals for possible inclusion in a proposed new wildlife refuge. Traversing between the islands and the barrens, a 16-foot inflatable, was hazardous because of severe tide rips and fast-changing weather that can quickly bring in strong winds and fog. Some of the islands, like Nord, are mostly cliffs with no really safe landing site. 90-acre Nord Island hums with the activity of about 30,000 mers and nearly as many kittiwakes on its steep cliffs. Nord Island hosts the second largest seabird population in the Barrens. In 1978, Ed Bailey visited the Barren Islands in early spring when there was still snow on the ground. In both spring and summer, cloud cover, mainly fog, is extensive. 1,075 acre East Amatuli is the most studied of all the Barren Islands, mainly because it has the largest seabird population, but also because it has the safest boat anchorage. Overall, there are roughly 320,000 seabirds on East Amatuli during summer breeding season. East Amatuli Cove, though the best site for a research camp, gets slammed with high winds and fierce storms. With the specter of offshore oil development in the North Gulf Coast and Lower Cook Inlet, a University of Washington research camp was set up in 1977 in East Amatuli Cove to gather baseline data on seabird breeding cycles so possible impacts of oil and gas activities could be determined. Tailless slopes and soil burrows provide nesting habitat for some 130,000 fork-tailed storm, storm petrels, which fly only at night near the islands to avoid predators while exchanging nesting duties. At night, the island is an amazing nocturnal spectacle of flitting and calling petrels. One mate returns from foraging at sea and takes the incubating bird's place so it can go feed. There are so many of them that a person can scarcely stand up and not be brushed by these birds. By day, the nearly 50,000 murres, 20,000 black-legged kittiwakes, nearly 75,000 tufted puffins, and other seabirds make this island buzz with activity. One thousand seven hundred twenty-five acre West Amatuli has only one small cove on its precipitous ten-mile coastline. The island rises over thirteen hundred feet on a ridge running its length. Ed Bailey's original survey in the 1970s found a small fork-tailed storm petrel colony above this cove. With about fifty thousand tufted puffins, West Amatuli has the second most puffins in the Barrens. With roughly 23 miles of coastline and 6,935 acres representing 70% of the land area in the Barrens, Yushigat Island has almost no seabirds. The lack of seabirds is partly due to introduction of Arctic foxes in 1928 and the presence of a large ground squirrel population. Interestingly, Yushigat's first known fox farmer was a New York socialite named Kay Barker, who likely put the original foxes on the island. Sometime in the 1930s, she returned to Yushigat with two Seldovia trappers, remaining through summer and into midwinter, catching live foxes to take back to New York with her. Yushigat is the only island in the Barrens with a substantial Sitka spruce grove of several hundred acres that are situated in fairly flat areas protected by mountains. Fierce winds have stunted the tree's development. The, the spruce surround a large lagoon that has dolly barking. This is the area where Kay Barker built her cabins. 
Several archaeological sites found on Ushigat show that indigenous natives used the island. Historical accounts from Russian America describe Aleut natives being sent in open badaras to the Barren Islands from Kodiak to collect bird skins. In 1987, Ed Bailey and a fox trapping crew spent three weeks removing the foxes to restore the island's biodiversity. Subsequent checks of Ushigat showed no sign of foxes and some increase in bird life. Only 275 acres, Sud Island is significant because of the rhinoceros auklet colony discovered by Ed Bailey in 1975. The current population estimate is roughly 1,500 rhinoceros auklets. About 10,000 fork-tailed storm petrels and 2,000 tufted puffins also nest here. Marmots were likely put on Sud for Navy personnel stationed there in 1945 to operate a weather station. In 2010, a refuge expedition tried to remove all the marmots from the island to protect the rhinoceros auklet colony. Between June and August of 2010, 177 marmots were removed from Sud Island. Probably around 5 to 10 still remain and will likely be removed in 2011. The second largest stellar sea lion rookery in the region is on Sugarloaf Island. As its name suggests, this 200-acre island is extremely rugged, steep, and rocky, rising to 1,210 feet high in the center. Due to years of annual population declines beginning in the 1970s, the western population of stellar sea lions were declared a threatened species in 1990 and subsequently listed as endangered. To protect the sea lions, National Marine Fisheries Service declared a no-vessel buffer zone within three nautical miles of Sugarloaf Island. March 24, 1989, over 11 million gallons of oil spilled into Prince William Sound when the Exxon Valdez ran aground on Bly Reef. Strong currents brought the oil to the Barrens, home to some of the largest seabird colonies in the spill's path. More than 30,000 dead seabirds were collected around the Gulf of Alaska. Lack of comprehensive pre-spill baseline population data makes it difficult to determine the long-term effects of the oil spill on the Barren Island seabird colonies. Despite the spill, the Barren still hosts very large productive seabird colonies. The Exxon Valdez spill is a wake-up call to create spill prevention measures for the Cook Inlet region. Thank you.